The Nebraska Cornhuskers just recently had their spring game, and there was a lot of positives to come out of their spring game. People have their questions about what this Nebraska team will be in year two under Matt Rule, but year two for Matt Rule is always a big jump. In year two at Baylor, he led Baylor to a 7-6 record, which was a six-game improvement from year one, because he went 1-11 in year one at Baylor. Matt Rule has a really good resume as a head coach, and I really think we can look at Nebraska as a team that could take a step up and at least make a bowl game in 2024. And I really think we saw a lot of great signs in that spring game from Nebraska. And I know Nebraska has been a cursed program for a while. The constant one possession losses and losing seasons haven't been the greatest look for Nebraska football. But I really think they are set up to have their best season in a while. And if anybody can get them over that slump, then I think it can definitely be Matt Rule. And I think there's a bunch of reasons to be optimistic about the future of Nebraska football with Matt Rule at head coach. And the whole foundation of building a team is having a quarterback, and I have to say I was very impressed with how Dylan Riola looked in that spring game. The quarterbacks in general looked much improved from last season, but if I am being honest, Dylan Riola did not look like a true freshman in that spring game. And I understand that it is just a spring game, but Dylan Riola had a nearly perfect day regardless of that one tipped interception he had. He looked very calm and precise in the pocket. He has a lightning quick release and just on his first possession he went 4 for 4 with a nice touchdown pass to sophomore receiver Jeneron Bonner. He also threw a dart down the field to Jalen Lloyd who also looked incredible in that spring game. Dylan Riola and Jalen Lloyd have potential to create magic the next couple of years for the Cornhuskers. Dylan Riola finished the day with 239 passing yards and he went 16 for 22 with his completions on the day. And I have no doubt that Dylan Riola is going to be a day one starter for this Nebraska team. And I think he really separated himself from the other quarterbacks in that spring game. I also want to give a shout out to Henrich Harburg because he looked much improved from last season. And he showed some flashes including a 41 yard touchdown pass to the freshman wideout, Ja'Cory Barney Jr. Dylan Riola should definitely be that guy going forward. But I think Harburg should fill a decent role as a backup even if he does not play much. And I think we can be much more optimistic about that receiving core because the freshman Ja'Cory Barney Jr. has a bright future ahead of him. We also seen Jalen Lloyd have a great day and he should definitely be one of those top targets for Dylan Riola next season. And Jalen Lloyd is a huge player to have back on that offense. Transfer portal wideout Isaiah New Year showed potential and he had two catches on the day and he offers incredible speed for this Nebraska team. The other transfer portal wideout Jamal Banks did not play much but I expect him to play a factor in that receiving core next season because he was very solid last season at Wake Forest and he was that leading receiver for Wake Forest. Also keep an eye on a guy like Malachi Coleman because we didn't see much from him, but we may see more from him in the fall. The receivers look pretty good and much improved from last season, and I think they have a lot more talent at wide receiver than they did last season. The tight ends also have a lot of upside, and they made a lot of plays on the day. That is a big positive for this team. And of course, the running back room for Nebraska is incredibly stacked and wide open for anybody to earn that starting spot. Gabe Irvin Jr. and Ramir Johnson are both still recovering from injuries, but when they come back, they should push for the starting spot. But one of the biggest surprises for Nebraska's spring game had to be transfer portal running back Dante Dowell. He led the day in carries and he had two touchdowns, including an impressive 49-yard touchdown. He also is a reliable target in the backfield and he caught four screen passes on the day. And Dante Dowell might just be that number one guy going forward for Nebraska in the running back room. But in general, Nebraska has a very deep running back room, and they averaged 176 rushing yards a game last season despite having a bunch of injuries. And if they could stay healthy in that running back room, then Nebraska could be an even bigger force at running back next season. And that is really going to help lead them to success in the Big Ten. And I really liked what I saw from this offense as a whole. And the offense legitimately outplayed the defense in that game. People may think that the defense isn't that good and disappointed in the spring game, But one of the biggest positives for Nebraska football is their defense. And I know when the fall comes, they are going to be a very solid defensive team. And that is just a given because they have one of the top defensive coordinators in the country, Tony White, who is a future head coach. But keeping him around another year was huge for this Nebraska team. And Nebraska also returned 78 of that production on defense from last season. Now let's not forget, last season they were really good on the defensive side of the ball and they only allowed 18 points a game, which was top 16 in the country. So don't be surprised if they take an even bigger step up on defense because they return a lot on defense and they return their defensive coordinator which is big. So there's no reason to overreact to the offense outplaying the defense 
And honestly, it has to be great if you are a Nebraska fan because you saw a lot of explosiveness from that offense. Because if we're just being honest, Nebraska was terrible on the offensive side of the ball last season. And a big part of that reason was because they did not have a quarterback that could throw more touchdowns than interceptions. So seeing the offense go out there and put on a show was great to see. And I really think Nebraska has a stud at quarterback with five-star Dylan Riola leading the way. And imagine if the offense reaches its full potential in 2024 with Dylan Riola at quarterback. I think Nebraska is a team that can be in every single game next season even against the best teams in the Big Ten. Because they already have a big advantage defensively. But now they have a five-star quarterback in Dylan Riola. And I think they have a lot more upside at receiver heading into next season. They also have many solid tight ends on the roster. The Russian attack is also going to be very good, just like it was last season. And Dante Dowell really adds to that mix. And I really think the offense is destined to take a step up in 2024. And I really think that Matt Rule can finally get Nebraska out of that bowl slump. And I see too many positives with this team. So I really think the floor in 2024 for Nebraska football is a bowl game. And realistically, I would say the ceiling is around 9 or 10 wins because the schedule is very favorable. So I would be really shocked if they did not make the bowl game in 2024. Obviously, injuries are a part of the game, and you could argue that injuries held Nebraska back from making a bowl game last season, and maybe if they get destroyed with injuries in 2024, they will not make a bowl game. And I really don't want to see that happen, but they did have some injury concerns in that spring game. Demetrius Bell and Bly Hill both got carted off the field. That really wasn't great to see because both of those players were going to have big roles next season, and Matt Rule praised both of those players in the spring. So that was definitely a negative for Nebraska's spring game because the injuries did not sound like they were great. But that is just football and you must learn how to adapt. And I really hope Nebraska football can stay healthy because I really think this is a team that can possibly be an 8 or 9 win team, possibly even 10 wins in 2024. And I think the future of Nebraska football is very bright. Now it's time for them to show it in the fall because that's when the games are played and the results are truly shown in the fall. But Nebraska may just be a sleeper team in the Big Ten. And I'm definitely not making a prediction, but if the trend continues and they can maintain five-star quarterback Dylan Riola and head coach Matt Rule, then this may honestly be a team that could compete for a Big Ten championship within the next five years or so. Because Matt Rule led both his previous teams to conference championships, so he knows what it takes to turn a bad program around. And I really think this Nebraska team is definitely trending up. But obviously we have to see it on the field first, so we'll see if the results start showing in 2024 because Nebraska hasn't even made a bowl game in quite a while. But realistically, I think we can expect to step up from Nebraska in 2024. And all we can do is speculate, but I thought it was a great spring game for Nebraska football. And I think that this is a really solid team, so we'll see what they can do moving forward. But anyways, you guys let me know your takeaways from Nebraska's spring game down in the comments below. But that is going to do it for today's video. Let me remind you guys to like the video, and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you'll love this channel because we upload a ton of college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing and also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But that is going to do it, guys, and peace out.